Have you ever wondered why you are the way you are? Are your traits affected by your genes or the physical environment you live in? Today, we will talk about epigenetics, or the study of genetics that are caused by external and environmental factors. The human body is made up of trillions of different cells. Each one of these cells has specific jobs. For instance, our red blood cell carries oxygen, and cardiomyocytes make sure the heart can work properly. Cells only produce the proteins they need for their assigned jobs. These cells all differentiated from stem cells and become specialized. Scientists were not sure how these cells became specialized. Some believed unneeded stretches of DNA were destroyed and emitted out of the cell, while others thought that DNA could be turned on and off. John Gordon decided to tackle the problem. He took a differentiated cell out of an adult toad and removed its nucleus. Then he took a toad egg and removed its nucleus. Using a process called cell nuclear transfer, he placed the differentiated cell's nucleus into the egg. Although most cells ended up dying, some actually developed into baby toads. Since an embryo develops from stem cells, John Gordon just proved that cells can turn on and off sections of DNA. But how? The answer? Epigenetics. One important example where scientists saw epigenetics in action was the Dutch Hunger Winter, which took place in Netherlands. The Dutch Hunger Winter was a period of famine from 1944 to 1945 as a result of World War II. Women who were affected by the famine early in their pregnancy gave birth to small and underweight babies. On the other hand, women who were affected by the famine only at the beginning of their pregnancy gave birth to babies of a normal weight. This is mostly to be expected since babies go through a large amount of growth at the end of a pregnancy. What was remarkable was that small babies stayed small throughout their lifetime with a lower rate of obesity than the normal population. Normal weight babies had a higher rate of obesity than the normal population. Even more amazing is the fact that these traits were passed on. The descendants of the small babies, including their children and grandchildren, stayed small. The descendants of the normal weight babies, including their children and grandchildren, kept that higher rate of obesity. Therefore, the effect of the famine was observed for three generations. Why? Let's take a closer look at their DNA to find out more. Chromosome 11 contains the insulin-like growth factor 2 gene, which plays a large role in the development of a fetus, although it plays less of a role after birth. Scientists compared the IGF2 gene of individuals affected by the famine in early development, or the big babies, to their siblings of the same sex. Scientists observed a 5.2 lower methylation on the IGF2 gene by the individuals exposed to the famine early in their development. On the other hand, when scientists compared individuals who were exposed to the famine in late development, or the small babies, there was no significant change in methylation. Since the IJF2 gene does not play a large role after birth, this gene does not play a large role in the increased and decreased rates of obesity, although it shows how environmental factors at different points in development affect your epigenome. But epigenetic changes are not limited to environmental factors. Epigenetic mechanisms such as methylation and acetylation play a major role in controlling gene expression. Methylation is a process in which repeating nucleosomes consisting of 146 base pairs of DNA each wrap around each other creating histones, or structural units of DNA. Methyl groups are then attached to the DNA's nucleotide, specifically cytosine and therefore is able to modify chromatin structure and regulation, and repress gene transcription. Methylation can also silence genes and non-coding genomic regions. For example, methylation can inhibit transcription activation by blocking transcription factors from entering target sites, but it can also help methyl binding domain proteins to bind to target sites. Another form of histone modification is acetylation or the process of adding acetyl groups to a chemical compound. Vincent Alfrey and his colleagues at Rockefeller University discovered that acetylation was linked to DNA transcription, and histone deacetylation is associated with the repression of transcription. Histone acetylation also plays a crucial part in transcription activation. For example, histones are modified as positively charged epsilon amino groups of lysines by histone acetyl transferases, or HAT. Histone acetyl transferases acetylates lysines by adding negatively charged acetyl group and in turn reduces the interaction between the histone tail and nucleosome. Histone modification is considered a major regulatory mechanism of epigenetics and genetic processes. 
Histone modification is directly controlled by the regulation of enzymes adding and removing acetyl and methyl groups. In recent research, it has been discovered that methylation can occur in embryonic development, genomic imprinting, and X chromosome inactivation. These mechanisms can prove to be beneficial or detrimental. Since recently, scientists have linked errors in these mechanisms as possible onsetters for several human diseases such as cancer. Cancer is the uncontrolled growth of cells. The cells keep dividing and dividing and dividing without anything stopping them. Normal cells are regulated by tumor suppressor genes, which when active decrease cell division. Proto-oncogenes, on the other hand, increase cell division. Both are important for a healthy cell. However, many times a cancer cell will contain an oncogene, which is an overexpressed proto-oncogene that leads to excessive cell division. A cancer cell will also many times have problems with their tumor suppressor genes. In clear renal cell carcinomas, 19% of the time, the VHL gene, a type of tumor suppressor gene, was hypermethylated, rendering it inactive. In sporadic breast cancer, 13% of the time, the BRCA1 gene, another type of tumor suppressor gene, was hypermethylated, so it was unable to function. Scientists realized epigenetics were responsible for cancer, but since epigenetics are reversible, perhaps they could use epigenetics to treat cancer. One treatment is Vidaza, which is used to treat a group of blood and bone marrow disorders known as MDS. Methylated DNA is very hard for a cell to transcribe, and the DNMT1 enzyme aids in methylation. Vidaza acts as an inhibitor for the DNMT1 enzyme, which helps prevent methylation of tumor suppressor genes. Another similar drug is Dacogen, which inhibits methylation as well. Two other drugs, Zolinza and Istodax, are HDAC inhibitors. HDAC proteins actually remove acetyl groups from acetated DNA, making the DNA much more difficult to read. Since these drugs inhibit HDAC proteins, the DNA is able to remain acetated. Scientists are studying epigenetics to try and find new and better cancer treatments every day. The importance of epigenetics cannot be overstated. It affects each and every one of us. Scientific achievements have shown the major role it plays in regulating the human genome. It can change based on a person's environment and is even passed down through generations. By studying epigenetics, scientists learn more about the past, the present, and can even develop medications for the future. Epigenetics is the cause behind many terrible diseases including cancer, but by using epigenetics, scientists can develop new and more effective treatments. In this very moment, scientific organizations and research institutions are using epigenetic research to make new medical treatments and create a better life for people all around the world.